This is a Unify switch. This is a Unify security gateway. And this is a Unify access point. These and some ethernet cables are all you need to set up a new wireless network. Stay tuned to find out how. Before you start, please make sure you have enough ethernet cables because the first thing you'll need to do is wire together all of your network devices and wire a computer via ethernet cable to the switch in order to configure this in the first place. You'll need a minimum of four and if you're using PoE injectors, you'll need a minimum of six ethernet cables. You can use the mobile app to adopt devices to existing networks or to set them up in standalone mode. So if your deployment is particularly simple, simpler than this, by all means just use the app and bypass the controller completely if you don't need all of the statistics and security measures and extra configuration that you can get with the controller. So first, wire everything together according to this very slick diagram appearing on your screen. Then once everything is booted up, wait a little while for it to establish a connection and check if you have a working internet connection. If you're using a cable modem, you probably do, since it will automatically assign an IP, DNS server, etc. If you don't, check to see whether you're using a DSL modem. If this is you, you might have a PPPoE connection type rather than DHCP. This can be configured at the router's address, so we'll go to 192.168.1.1. And if you're unsure about how we found that IP address, the IP address for the security gateway, you'll just find it under network settings here. So if you have a DSL modem, you should just need the username and password, which you'll put in here. Static IP is a little beyond the scope of this video, since mostly they're distributed by request from your ISP. So if you didn't request one, you probably don't have one. If you do have one, then you'll put those details in here. Once you have a connection, this banner at the top will be green and we can download the Unify controller software to begin setting up a new wireless network. So we need to set that up via the controller, which we'll get from ui.com slash download. Quick note that if you're restoring from an existing controller, make sure you download the same version as that of your backup, since restoring a backup from a different version to that on your system will probably give you problems. Otherwise, just go ahead and download the latest version. In our Applications folder then, we'll now see Unify Discover and Unify. Unify is the one we want, and this is the desktop application for the controller. Now, if you were to quit this desktop application, or to shut down the computer, you would get a warning asking you if you want to shut down the controller as well. So, importantly, even though you view the controller in the browser, the controller itself only runs so long as the desktop application is running. If you quit the desktop application and then refresh the controller in your browser, you'll see that it is in fact no longer running. So if you decide that you do want the controller running 24 seven for troubleshooting purposes, for security reasons, or simply for the purpose of collecting data 24 seven, you will have to look into alternate means of hosting the controller. You'll need some sort of dedicated device, which could be a server, a cloud server, an old laptop or somewhat more simply a cloud key or Unify dream machine which we'll talk about uh, a bit more later. So opening this we'll first be asked to set up our controller we'll name it, confirm this, log in with our single sign-in credentials you'll probably need to create one if you haven't yet Now you can adopt your devices automatically at this stage if they appear. For now, just to show you some more within the controller, I'm only going to adopt the USG. And we'll create a new wireless network and confirm all of that. So just before I give you a quick tour of what you see here, we'll finish getting everything configured. 
Come to Devices here along the left hand side and ensure everything is adopted. If you see a device greyed out, reading managed by other, like this, this means it has already been adopted by another controller. If you want to manage that device from this controller, you'll want to have the manager of the other controller forget the device, or you can factory reset that device if you have physical access to it, and it will become adoptable here in your controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and factory reset this one now. Okay, so that has been factory reset, and you can see that it's now adopting. From the devices page, you can also add aliases to your devices to make them more easily identifiable. So we'll go ahead and do that now for each device. And you'll see them switch back to provisioning temporarily as they apply that alias change. If we come down to this cog icon and head to wireless networks, we'll see this one we created during the initial setup process. We can create as many as we like and group these under WLAN groups. So if we just create another one, then return to devices, we'll see that our UAP Pro is provisioning again, and your devices will start provisioning any time you make a change in the controller that affects them, and they'll just be pulling down those changes from the controller. So right now, it's pulling down the details of that new wireless network we created, and down here on the right-hand side under WLANs, you should see the SSIDs of the Wi-Fi networks being broadcast over the access point, and our new Wi-Fi network has popped up. You'll notice that this bar hasn't turned green yet, and the reason for that is there aren't any clients connected to it yet. So let's change that. We'll turn Wi-Fi on, and we can see our new Wi-Fi networks being broadcast over the Unify access point. We'll connect to this one, and to demonstrate that we're no longer connected via Ethernet, we'll pull out the connection from this port of the switch. And here in our network preferences, we'll see that the Ethernet connection is no longer active. And now if we look at our map of devices, we'll see our simple configuration of three devices and our single connected client. This map page, by the way, is really useful for visualizing your network, especially as it grows. You can quickly collapse and expand devices with a click. So if you have lots of devices, you can focus singly on all the devices connected to a single switch, for example or all of the clients connected to a particular access point. Now we'll generate some traffic and take a look at our generated statistics. We've streamed some media and generated some traffic, and here in stats on the left hand side we can view that, using this drop down menu to filter the type of traffic we're looking at. We can click through these panels for more information to see, for example, which devices have generated the most traffic of a particular type. As we mentioned earlier, if you decide you want the controller running all the time, you can look into using a dedicated device or cloud server to host it. As far as dedicated devices go, the simplest entry level options that require the least configuration would be the cloud key or the Unified Dream Machine. The Unified Dream Machine or UDM is actually, if we just go back to the map view, so the UDM is everything you see here wrapped into a single package. So it's a four port gigabit switch, it's a USG, it's a wireless access point, all wrapped into one as well as a dedicated host for the controller. And the cloud key is a dedicated host for the controller also, so it could be tagged onto this current configuration um, for a version of this setup that has a dedicated device for the controller already. So that about covers getting your first Unify network up and running. If you'd like a more in-depth look at the features of the controller, then feel free to request that in the comments section and we'll be sure to bring that to you in the near future. So once again, thank you so much for watching. We hope you found this useful. We hope to see you in the next one. Thank you and have a good day.